And welcome to Let Him Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and we have a great show in store for you. Returning as our guest is Vox. Welcome, Vox. Hello. How are you doing? And we're going to talk about what's happening in Syria, which I think is a very important uh, topic right now to talk about. And uh, if folks uh, have missed it, this morning we got the news that a Russian fighter jet, fighter bomber really, was shot down. And at least one of its pilots was actually killed either while he was floating down in his parachute or on the ground. And uh, then later on, there was an attempt to search for the missing pilot. Uh, I think there's a missing pilot right now, as far as I know, uh, hiding in the mountains. Uh, they sent some uh, Russian helicopters in to search and rescue, and one of them was shot down and one Russian Marine was killed. Mm. So now we have uh, Russian boots on the ground, so to speak, at least, to try and rescue their pilot. And um, we have a armed conflict that has just broken out between a member of NATO, Turkey, and the former, former Soviet Union, Russia. Right, so this is unusual. It's like a, a time warp. People are saying this is like the 1930s, 1914, or maybe uh, the 1950s. I don't know. What's, what's happening here, Vox? What do you think is going on? I think it's a provocation, uh, like everything that's going well, on. Whose right provocation? Uh, Some people would say it was Putin's provocation. He was no, flying over. No, Putin's defending his uh, people. He's defending his uh, his. Uh, his country. Uh, Putin is not, and Russia is not an, a, an imperialist, uh, outwardly aggressive nation. We are. Uh, we are. We have uh, military bases in over a hundred countries. Putin does not. Uh, Russia is uh, not an expansionist government. Period. There's just no nothing. There's no record and no news of them doing any wars anywhere. That's us doing it, and uh, we we do all our wars though via proxies mm -hmm. now. And so this is a new world we're entering. We don't confront people directly. We do it through proxies like ISIS, which is a proxy of Western intelligence. So uh, it's uh, funded. You know, um, in the West, we have this um, uh, amnesia. Uh, a year and a half ago, uh, or last August, actually, uh, it was reported, August 2014, uh, in mainstream media, in Newsweek and New York Times, that uh, Saudi Arabia was uh, financing ISIS. That's where they got their money. And that narrative wasn't very uh, attractive uh, because uh, they're our chief allies, so if our, and they're a client state, so they don't do anything without our blessings. And so if, uh, so they had to change that narrative because that wasn't working. Uh, that didn't very really look good. So now it's, it's a self-funding narrative. They're doing it through oil sales, and they might very well be at this point uh, high, stealing a lot of that oil from Syria and moving it through uh, Turkey to, to uh, Erdogan's Turkey. And it's actually Erdogan's son is uh, in charge of some of the shipping companies that are moving that oil around and, and, and profiting from it. So, and then, but the, in the West here, on the, all the mainstream media, um, not nobody's mentioning that actually. Uh, so they never to, do. No, they that's never way do. too complicated. Yeah. Well, it's not that it's complicated. It's that what we have is like a mafia operation here. It's not, we don't have. Uh, we're not like the defenders of democracy and freedom throughout. But it's a lot operation. easier to just say, "I'm an American. I love America. Put your foot down. Let's let's do what Trump says to do and and, and register everybody as a foreigner." Well, what's a foreigner? Well, anybody who doesn't have my religion is a foreigner. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's just uh, bomb them into the Stone Age. Let's let let's let Russia. Let's give Russia bombs to bomb them. Let's bomb them as much as we can. Isn't that what Trump's been saying? I mean, it's so much easier to go along with that. It doesn't take much thinking or analysis. Easier for the public for the public, viewing, for, the, the for the, uh, the, the unfortunately the mainstream public, right? Right. In any country, I I, I, don't, I don't care what they think. <laughs> Actually, I, you know, I, I only want a sane policy and a sane, uh, moral, uh, decent government. I don't want a, a mafia organization. So, but, but the problem is, don't is you that, think though Trump is going to get elected? I think that it's a well. Let's put it this way: as much as I never liked the man, um, if it was a choice between him or that monster Hillary Clinton, you 
couldn't give me uh, any. You couldn't pay me to vote for Hillary Clinton, so I'd, I'd actually vote for Trump <laughs> over Clinton, right? Uh, yeah, she's, she's just a, but a negative a neo, vote. She's a neoconservative. She's a hardline, hardcore uh, Republican conservative posing as a Democrat, but she has no Democratic behaviors at all. So she's a, a monster and a pig, and uh, I wouldn't go anywhere near this. This. Cult but she's a woman. Monster. She would be the first woman president. Well, that's unfortunately the the comatose American population would be like so giddy, you know. Because well, the problem with that is that you know they're going through all this the stereotypes. Like we had so many years of Bush, and that was such a disaster. So we finally, when Barack Obama came, people said, "Oh, a black face will be our savior," you know. And of course, it was a, a, sh a, a wolf in black face clothing there. So they'll go to the archetype of woman, thinking that they're going to get a woman. She's not a woman. She's a monster. And then that it'll be a gay. Next, it'll be a gay. Why is president. she a monster? Uh, because if you look at her record, uh, she's a tool, a complete. Uh, she's the property of Wall Street. She's a Wall Street puppet, and she's a puppet of the military-industrial complex. So she works for Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin. Uh, Those are Norfolk nuclear Gun. weapons. Yeah, she's working they, they, for the military arms manufacturers, basically. Right. Those are her. Those are the people who control everything she says. So when she gets up there and smiles, it's because uh, a team of experts said, you know, you got to smile more, you filthy rat. Why do you hate her so much? Uh, because well, she, if you look at her voting I mean, record, she voted along with Bush for every war. She supported every war. Right, right, she's, but, uh, she wants to now have a war uh, Iran. And I if, want to pull back, though. There if she's a president, we'll have a war with we've Iran. We've had a lot of bad presidents in my lifetime, all right? We had Reagan. We had Nixon. I mean, some of them, people said they were actually good presidents, although I hated them as well, right? But then... There seems to be almost no anger at all, except maybe Nixon finally, the establishment really got rid of him. He was actually won in a, in a landslide. And then we get to the Bill Clinton, who's like, you know, in some ways, I'm not going to, to a lot of people, he might have been a breath of fresh air. He brought in gays to, into, you know, he did a lot. I mean, he didn't do enough. He held back. He, everybody protested and angered him. But he did more than Reagan or Bush or anybody before him ever did on all of these issues. He opened mm -hmm. the door to gays in the military. He opened the well, door that's, that's to a, a lot I, of different... I don't support gays in the military. I don't support the military at all. It's not right. that I'm against gays. I want everybody to do <laughs> with their genitalia what they please. But why, you know, and why... Are the Clintons, why do they attract so much specific bile and anger and hatred? Uh, because I mean, they're we have frauds. Vince Foster they're, they're and all frauds. that. Uh, right? They're, they had an attempt to impeach the guy. I mean, like, they're frauds. They're, they're fakers. They're, they sold the country out. Uh, Clinton's, uh, Clinton's uh, uh, economic policies actually were more of a sellout than anything. Uh, the, NAFTA and all that oh, stuff NAFTA, is right. uh, is a sellout for the American worker. He gutted he gutted the American worker ultimately. So they're they're frauds. The, the so, so basically, his uh, globalization that globalization he, that was he, really hijacked uh, was jump started under Clinton basically. And, and that's really why the Clintons, you think, get the get uh, so much bile and so much anger. I don't know. I think there's a lot of reasons. I mean, I think she because uh, for for one. For the main one is that she's just an untrustworthy liar. I don't want to talk about the Clintons, so let's talk about yeah, well, what's going on. Yeah, well, she might be president, and she'd be making decisions on this. <clears throat> well, yeah, but that's uh, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> but, well, it uh, could be Trump too. But the, the ISIS problem, though, is this: the most the people the thing that people have to understand is that ISIS is a creation of Western intelligence. It's a creation of uh, the privatized versions of the CIA here. With CIA would be would have oversight. Uh, but uh, this, this is the many privatized intelligence groups here in the West uh, in conjunction with their uh, client states, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and uh, Turkey, to, to do the logistical support for ISIS, right? Uh, these kids are, are teenagers, most of yeah. them, and they're in their early 20s. They don't how to do any of this stuff. So if they're rampaging around uh, taking over nations, they have in the shadows the, the, the f largest intelligent networks in the world directing them to, all, to, to mm -hmm. do all the things that they're doing. And uh, the bottom line is that uh, they don't have, and, and just like 
every monster that you create. Sometimes the monster takes on a life of its own, and you know, and that's how Islamic uh, fundamentalism works. It's like a wind-up doll. Think of it as a, a wind-up doll. You just wind it up, and then it just goes by itself. And so this Paris uh, uh, attack uh, may well have been out of the, uh, could easily have been uh, commanded by uh, el elements from, uh, well, Israel perhaps, or Mossad. I mean, look, you know, uh, the French recognized uh, Palestine, and so they have to be punished. And uh, there's an election uh, next month in uh, France, uh, the, the their version of the midterm elections, and it looks like the right-wing uh, parties are going to win, and we're having a right-wing resurgence throughout the world. Right-wing parties are taking over. Argentina, they took over. Uh, mm -hmm. They own our Congress. So we're going to the uh, world of the thuggish right wing. So and you don't see really war. You, don't, you think that it's mostly collusion between these countries that you don't really see a lot of people are saying World War Two, World War One, and it's a similar things are happening that seem similar to the days before those two great wars. Yeah, this is looking like But at the like same time you seem to be saying that these people are much more in collusion than they were in those days and that they really have no interest in fighting each other, but creating the fear of fighting in order to profit somehow. Who? So who the, the, the rulers of all these countries. West, um, you know, except for of course Russia. But I would think I would throw Putin in with that too. No, Russia, not at all. Russia is a very sane and uh, look. If you you know they they you've been uh, there, right? You've yeah, traveled there. Yeah. Recent. What did you see when you were there? Uh, just a, a a country that's a rule of law, a very uh, very well behaved, very nice people. Uh, you know, uh, you you don't there's no no violence. Uh, you, there's no you don't see aggression in the streets. Uh, just polite uh, people. They stop at the red light when they're crossing the street and wait for the light to turn green. We don't even do that here. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're very nice people. And right. uh, they're, they're not our enemy, uh, but, but uh, there's uh, elements here that want to make them our enemy. Uh, they're, they're nice people. And Putin is, uh, has more honor and integrity in his toenail than the entire uh, uh, ruling establishment here in How the How about West. those planes that got shot down over Ukraine? How about that plane? Was that... Uh, that, that looks like uh, that looks like it could have been... Uh, it's not what we're being told, let's put it that way. Uh, so... One of the things I've been talking about is that it, in this in this world now we have uh, a lot of uh, weapons that uh, uh, can do these kind of things very stealthily. There's uh, mm -hmm. there's the uh, Boeing uh, YAL-1 uh, mounted on a uh, 747. It's a laser that can shoot a beam uh, 100 and, uh, hundreds of miles and lock on to a section of the fuselage and knock it right out of the sky, burn it up. And uh, they have Lockheed Martin makes their version of it from ground-based. And uh, we also have uh, the Navy has a version of it made by uh, uh, a consortium of several com companies that make the Navy version of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, these uh, these uh, weapons are online now. And uh, What's the purpose? If the West, if the United States and the Western countries are, you know, secretly punishing the Russians for their foreign policy, what would be the, uh, you know, given that Putin is a person who you say is a, stands by his principles, how is that? Protecting all you're going to do is make him even more uh, strong in his principles. Well, it's a big gamble. We're doing, uh, but we always lose. Like, for example, uh, I believe that the Russian plane that was uh, taken out of the sky with all those passengers was a provocation by Western intelligence. Again, because ISIS doesn't know how to do this kind of stuff. ISIS is just a bunch of kids with one foot in the grave already. They're mm -hmm. just... Uh, they're just a bunch of yahoos that are out there because they want to be cool, uh, but they don't know how to do anything, okay? So if that plane was taken out of the sky, that was done so at the uh, direction of Western intelligence, right? And the idea was to get the uh, the Russian people to be, uh, to, to turn against Russian support for intervention in the region. That was the purpose of it. Well, the eventuality of it was now Russia has a complete legitimate role now in that region, and no one, not a single person on the world, can question Russia's uh, now Mm -hmm. uh, total legitimate per, uh, presence in that vital oil-rich region 
So, so the American. Uh, the, let me finish this. The American, the American foreign policy persons like that are behind this, like Kerry and Newland. All these people. Newland is not behind this one, but all these people in the State Department and the CIA who are behind this stuff. They need to go to jail because they're actually jeopardizing the strength of America. They're weakening this country. So, so in the past, they would have been thrown in jail so for their blunders. You're, you're, you consider yourself a, an American. Yeah. You, you, don't, you love America as Yes, a I do. So you're saying you're having this really bitter, strong critique of our government, our, I use that in quotes, right, the government of the United States, and, and, and you embrace our traditional enemy of the last 150 years or so, this Russia. No, they're just honorable people. They're right. honest, honorable people. They're not, right, right. You know, so not. why is it? Uh, because this country has been taken over by a bunch of uh, mafia criminals, basically, who are liars, and their lies aren't even very good. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can, you, you know, if you have a, a reasonable grasp of reality, you can see right through it. Of course, most people watch television, mm -hmm. and so What's you're... What's the effect of those lies? Uh, the effect is that our economy is obliterated. There's, uh, the young people have no hope. Heroin usage is on the rise. The heroin e epidemic throughout this country. Um, uh, the, the young people, they get out of university, and there's no hope. We're a service economy, so you know you can find a job flipping a burger, you know. But the Chinese are making the navies and the militaries that are going to take over America because we we don't make anything anymore. But do you think we can make America great again? Uh, if we can, if we can get rid of this ruling class, if we can throw these pigs out of office, these these Democrats, these Republicans. You sort of sound like Trump there, the, the but you're not. I know you, and you're not like Trump, but you you sound a little bit like him there. Well, look. Nobody, no reasonable American is comfortable with any American politician anymore. We know they're selling us out. They work for the corporations. If you said that in the 1970s, they'd say, oh, you sound like a hippie from the 60s. But no one would argue with the point that, that all American politicians are now work for corporations, period. And they don't work for the American people. They work for their, spon their corporate sponsors. So Bernie Sanders? He seems like an okay guy, but he's uh, a, he's got an existential attachment to Israel because he's Jewish, and so therefore that we'll have another. For, we, if we, I would vote for the guy because I like him more than the rest of the candidates, mm -hmm. but we would have fealty to Israel, and that's another problem. We have to start to break if our fealty to Israel. What do you mean by that? Uh, Israel controls the foreign policy, at least controls the decision-making process of at least half of our political uh, body. The through like APAC? You're saying through APAC? Through APAC. You know, I control. always thought it was on the other side. I thought it's the United States who basically walks the dog, of the Israeli dog. It's a, it's a two-way street. Here's how it goes. Israel uh, wouldn't exist unless it was the U.S. Muscle behind it, okay, and they wouldn't have their nuclear bombs unless it was New York. The when you see a picture of their air force lined up, it looks like the American air force. Yeah, okay. So, the, <clears throat> yeah, but and, and well, maybe they won't. Maybe they don't need us, but I think they would because they're so they're so hated throughout the world. You know, nobody likes nobody likes Israel. Uh, but we have to. We, you know, we have to. They have so much power to crush your career if you speak out against them. So we have to say, oh yes, we, we share our common Judeo-Christian heritage. That's the line that all the Republican Congress congressmen re recite when they're when they're reactionary. Uh, pop, pop, you think that's an agreement made in hell? Because I think evangelical Christians, whatever they say about the Judeo-Christian tradition, are pretty anti-Semitic. That's, that's what I'm at, at the gut Listen, right level, at the gut level. That's, that's the point. It's, it's part of the belief system. If you know anything about a Republican reactionary doofus down south, you know that they were the type that were burning crosses on the lawns of Jews just 40 years ago. But now, since the Jewish uh, money is supporting their campaigns, they're like, oh, we share a common Judeo-Christian heritage. And that's a line that they rehearse, because as soon as you say, as soon as you link Judeo-Christian as one word like that, then all these, like, Southern uh, Christians and Evangelicals and Baptists go, oh, okay, well, it's, it's one unified thing. This nonsense. They'd go if they stopped financing the Republican Party, they would be burning crosses on their lawns again. So it's a fake. It's a fake. It's it's the Republicans just kiss up to the Jews because of the money, power, and the media and influence that they wield. If that if that dried up, that's some Jews wield. Not not all. Uh, yeah, not all. But, but 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 the bottom line is that in this country, the Republican Party is controlled by 
the Jewish lobby, period. Oh, I'm not supposed to say the word, the Israeli lobby. You can't use the word J. You can't use the J word in this country. I'm going to open up the phone. That's a, that's a dirty, dirty word. Oh, no, no, I, my best, I love Jews. I think the they're now. the greatest people. I think they're fantastic people. I don't want to give one penny to the government of Israel, though. Because uh, mm -hmm. they're a terrorist, a terrorist or a group, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I am no, I am have no love of Islam either. So uh, I, I, right. I, I, I treat right, everybody let's, equally. Let's go. Let's let's. Okay, we we ba we we bash this one group. Let's move on to the next group. Islam. Okay. Now there's there's a whole Islam wide is, variety of Islam, and not everybody is a terrorist. That's in Islam. true. I mean, it's a small, tiny group. Every everybody, if, you know, America is full of millions of people who believe in the American dream. Yeah. They're not like financing uh, crazy people in the wilds of. Uh, right. I think it's. I, I think the problem is religion in general. If you can get somebody to believe that there's a god in the sky looks down on you and takes care of you, you can get them to do anything. And so right. I think the problem is, is, and it's a shame that in the year 2015, that uh, they're still pushing this nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. So uh, I think of all the religions, uh, uh, Islam is the most repulsive of them all because uh, they would uh, kill uh, apostates like myself, and uh, you know, it's uh, the way they treat women is pretty horrible. And uh, yeah, so, so are you basically atheist? I'm an atheist for sure, absolutely. Okay. Of course. Now, some would say that well, atheism means like that, that. To me, it means science. It means that you think that science should lead above faith. It's a, it, it provides more much more elegant faith. and much more thorough and wondrous uh, explanations than oh, God created the world in seven days, and that should be like a litmus test. You ask all politicians. So, do you believe the Earth was uh, created in seven days? Yes or no? And then, uh, and they have to answer that question, and, and then it gives people a chance to understand what liars. Because I think actually most people who profess to believe in the God, when you ask them, do you believe in God? They say it because of the pressures, the society pressures and they don't want to be an outcast. But uh, I think uh, most people don't. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it, where do we go with this? You're amazing because the 21 minutes we've been talking just flew by. So I want to, for the next few minutes, I want you to tell me where we go with all this information that you're laying out. What is your vision for what to do? Right. with this information that well, you're, you're sharing with us. I don't necessarily agree with everything, but I'm giving you a forum here because I think you're a pretty smart guy and I think a lot of people follow your views. I mean, as you were saying earlier, there's a radio host, I don't want to give him any more publicity than he already has, who's got a huge, gigantic following, who's pretty much saying a lot of the same things you are. Who so. is? Alex. Oh, right. oh no, he's a he's a God fearing. He believes in yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, That's, he does. I didn't course. know that. Oh, yeah. But you like something else he says. Uh, I like uh, generally speaking. I have a soft spot in my heart for Alex Jones uh, because uh, you know he's out there every day slugging slugging it out with the with the the forces of the darkness uh, for sure. And uh, he's right. And he's going places where people like Amy Goodman wouldn't go in a million years because she's a coward. Uh, she won't deal with 9/11, for example. And anyone with the two two normally functional brain cells will tell you buildings don't just jump down in their footprints like that, especially seven. And so, uh, but the, it's been beaten into the ground too many times. But uh, she's a coward; she won't deal with it. So, uh, yeah, Alex Jones deals with the hard issues, and he takes the heat from 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 that. But where I would go is just uh, I would uh, you know try to be less tolerant towards religions. Uh, I'm, I'm sick of have to, having to tolerate this stuff. I mean, when I, at this point, I mean, I used to when they when the um, when they would come knocking on my door, <laughs> I used to be just kind to them. You know, now I'm like, look, just get, get, get out of here. I don't what do you think of Ben Carson? <laughs> I think he's a, he's a liar. I, I think he's a, a totally a phony, phony liar. Well, he always like he sticks his foot in his mouth and then totally changes. I didn't mean that. One, I said one this, way I you know he's phony is he's a black Republican. And the bottom line is that. Blacks and Republicans don't mix. Rep Republicans are racist. Don't you get it? They are racists. Period. And if they if they if they ever take a stand that's not racist and say something like, "Oh, he's a credit to his race" or something, that means they're racist. So blacks, I mean Republicans, are racist. And a black Republican is a sellout to his own. I people. can't disagree with you, man. I have to say that I, I don't agree with everything you said, but a lot of what you say, I I, I really uh, identify with the uh, with the force of your beliefs and of your you know. And I understand that you feel what you do because you all the things you mentioned, you see the the people who are 
uh, suffering in, right. in the United States and around the world because of the policies of exactly these, right. this right. handful of people sure. who are pulling all the strings and then sure. hide behind, sure. you know, pl as if political correctness is there to defend them. No, well, that, that, this uh, is, like blue this lives is, matter or some crazy stuff like that. Yeah. This is the worst thing in the world. Political correctness is the problem. I, I gave a, a big thing at uh, at the left forum and I gave the whole story about ISIS and I and and, and stuff and some douchebag liberal and a uh, politically correct moron goes, uh, oh, he's rex re racist, sexist, homophobic, and, and anti-Semitic, and I'm none, none of them. So just for the record, I want everybody to do with their genitalia what they please. So I support pop gays, uh, you know, any philia you want, I support it. Okay. I, some of my best friends are Jews. That's not a racist comment or a, a anti-Semitic comment. I genuinely have very close friends that are Jewish. I love them dearly. I love Jews. They're fantastic people. Uh, what's a sexist? Not uh, one uh, bone in my body. However, saying all that, I'm tired of uh, an entire left liberal sort of population that doesn't know anything if it's not a gender crisis. And they're so vacant and empty that they don't even have their own gender crisis. They live vicariously through someone else's gender crisis. And then they pat themselves on the back that they're progressive because they support someone else's gender crisis. That's how <laughs> what douchebags liberals have become. So I don't like conservatives. I don't like liberals. I like people with uh, a philosophical attachment to reality and a brain and some, some experience and some knowledge and I hate political correctness. So don't come to me and say things like, don't be judgmental. Like, ask, ask, ask any fucking <laughs> moronic liberals. You say, ask them, say, you know what, give me some advice because I, you know, I want some advice in life and I guarantee you out of ten nauseating cliche liberals, five of them will see in, in that series of advice say, don't be judgmental if they don't even know what that means. You, you are judgmental every moment of your existence, and if you're not, imagine what you would look like. We have two minutes, so tell me, Vox, what should we be doing? Uh, waking up, uh, uh, forgetting political correctness, because that's destroying the left, so we gotta start to speak freely, uh, be able to criticize things, be able to challenge things, confront things. Another one of the, the tenets of political correctness is don't be confrontational. You must conf be confrontational. We have to confront the police. We have to confront the police state. We have to confront the NSA. We have to confront the corrupt politicians. We have to s start confronting. We have to start speaking freely because it, it's just moronic out there. I, I, I went to Facebook the other day. I don't go there sure. very much. But I went to Facebook and I signed on. And the first thing was somebody was talking about face painting. He's like, my face painting is uh, you know, I'm a spiritual giver. And the other one was like, where, where making a transformational community and join it. And, and, and all this is is a series of words, key words that are using, and they have no meaning at all. Nothing of this stuff is spiritual. Nothing of it is transformational. It's pure garbage. So forget it. Why people just want to, because there's gain, you can make personal gain by taking this position. Well, if you, if you talk like, uh, you know, if you, uh, the, the bottom line is people adopt and adhere to the politically cor correct uh, uh, tenets because they, that, that, they think that that's the only way they're going to get laid or something like that. They, like, if, if you're a Republican, which is repulsive, you're not going to have sex in this town. Period. So if you want to have sex, well, you have to be a liberal. And what liberal means is you obey the rules of political correctness. Well, you know. So just for the record, I hate Republicans. I hate Democrats. I don't like conservatives. Liberals are nauseating. Liberals are walking, talking cliches. Every word out of a liberal's mouth is one cliche after another cliche. It's just cliche <laughs> after cliche after cliche. Box, I thank you for joining us. As usual, you are uh, have changed my mind and rocked our world. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks.